What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Modern Hobbyist. Today, I'm going to be installing a touchscreen for my 3D printer enclosure so I can control my Octoprint server without logging onto my computer. Let's get started. Welcome back everybody, I'm Charlie with Modern Hobbyist. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to my channel and click that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. In a previous video, I set up an Octoprint server on a Raspberry Pi to control my Anycubic i3 Mega, and I have absolutely loved having it. Octoprint comes with many amazing features and abilities that you don't get with your printer alone, but there are also several drawbacks that I'd like to address today. One of the best parts about Octoprint is that I can upload G-code files and start print jobs from any computer that's connected to the same network as the Octoprint server. There are also plugins such as Spaghetti Detective that will allow you to monitor your prints remotely. But for my purposes, I just wanted to be able to upload files from my computer immediately after I sliced them so I didn't have to mess around with SD cards all the time. Unfortunately, that also means I can't control prints from my printer's touchscreen anymore. I can still use the printer's interface to move the print head around, preheat the nozzle, and start prints on the SD card if I want to, but if I start a print from Octoprint, it has to be stopped from Octoprint as well. This means that if a print is failing, I have to run and find the nearest computer and potentially log into my Octoprint server before I can stop the print. So I decided to install a touch screen on my printer enclosure that can control my Octoprint server directly. To do this, I found a project called OctaScreen, which allows you to connect pretty much any touchscreen to your Raspberry Pi to control Octoprint. OctaScreen doesn't require a window manager like the popular alternative Touch UI, so it uses far fewer resources and it's optimized to work with resistive touchscreens, so it's perfect for my needs. But anyways, enough talk, let's get started actually building this thing.
With everything put together, there are a few commands I need to execute on the Pi by SSHing into it. Since I'm just upgrading the Octoprint setup I already had running, I'm gonna skip over how to set up Octoprint in this video, but I'll add a link in the description in case you're interested. After SSHing into the Pi, I updated the apt-get package manager, installed some required tools, and installed the FB Turbo video library, which is required for Octoscreen. Next, I downloaded and built the Octoscreen project and configured it to the correct resolution for my display. There are a lot of steps here that would take a while to walk through, so I'm not going to cover all of them. Instead, I'll have a write-up linked in the description in case you want to follow along. I also chose to mount the screen upside down just to make it easier to connect with the GPIO ribbon cable, so I had to run a few extra commands to rotate the screen and the touch inputs. With that completed, it was time to power this thing up and see the finished product. I now have a touchscreen mounted on my 3D printer's enclosure that I can use to start and stop prints as well as move the print head around and set the temperature for the hot end and build plate. Now if I see a print starting to fail, I can quickly and easily cancel it without running to find my laptop. I also added several 12 volt switches next to the touchscreen so I could turn the fans, the lights, and the entire enclosure on and off individually. With everything up and running smoothly, it was almost time for me to call this project completed, but before I do, there's one final touch I need to add to personalize it a little bit more. There we go, much better. Now I admit it might be a little bit overkill to put a touch screen on the enclosure for my 3D printer that already has a touch screen on it, but the benefits that I get from Octoprint make it totally worth the super fluidity. Eventually, I'd like to figure out a way to control the color of the lights from the new touchscreen as well, but that'll be a video for another time. Now, I'm not an expert at any of this stuff, so I'll have the original documentation that I followed linked in the description, as well as my own documentation that addressed some of the bugs and issues I ran into along the way. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel and click that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And don't forget to smash that like button. And finally, if you like this channel and you want me to keep making awesome projects like this, check out my Patreon page and consider supporting this channel at whatever level you can. But otherwise, that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>